Welcome to Unapologetically Unmedicated. This week, we are hearing from some mom experts in the field in our first ever Mom to Mom Mother's Day special. I'm your host, Fierce Lizzie, your favorite advocacy based birth educator and homeschooling business mom. But today, you're not going to be hearing from me. The Mom to Mom special is going to include moms just like you sharing the important topics that are near and dear to their mama hearts. Consider this our Mother's Day present to you and stay tuned every day this week for a brand new mini episode. You are on episode 62 and I am really excited for you to listen to this episode because I actually get asked about homeopathy quite a bit. This is something that's really new to me as well, but something that I've been introducing into my quote unquote medicine cabinet, which is full of herbs and homeopathy and natural remedies now. Um, But I always get a lot of questions and homeopathy is so, so unique that it helps to have an expert opinion. And that's exactly what Jill is going over today. She is a professional homeopath and homeopathy educator, and she's going to answer some of her most commonly asked questions like, what is homeopathy? Is it safe during pregnancy breastfeeding? Is it safe for babies? What can you use it for? What about potency and dosage? And then she shares her three favorite remedies. So let's jump right in. Hi, today I'm going to chat with you about some homeopathy basics. I'll start with a simple background of what homeopathy is. I'll then elaborate on its safety, including its safety in pregnant mamas, breastfeeding moms, and babies, as that's a typical area of concern. I'm then going to give you a quick overview of three remedies. It's super hard to narrow it down to just three since there's so many that I love, use frequently, and recommend. But since our time is short, that's just where we'll get started. So first, what is not homeopathy? As homeopathy grows, these mistakes are not as commonly made, but it still can be confusing. So I just like to point these out, that homeopathy is not an umbrella term for natural medicine or naturopathy or herbalism or natural living. Homeopathy is its own unique branch of natural healing. So what is it? Homeopathy is its own system of medicine that works with your body so that it can be restored to a state of balance or homeostasis. Our bodies are so wise and know what they're doing, but sometimes we need some help. Homeopathic remedies help the body to take action to overcome. They give it the encouragement or the nudge that it needs to complete what needs to be done. It works with your body to clear away symptoms and issues. They are not suppressed. It can be used for sudden onset things or acutes, like simple sicknesses, colds, flus, headaches, for injuries, or for more long-standing or chronic issues like hormonal problems or imbalances with your cycle, regular headaches, migraines, allergies, autoimmune conditions, fertility. It can be used all through pregnancy, in birth, This is just a very small preview. If there is an issue, there is a homeopathic solution. Because this is another area of confusion, I also wanted to point out that we use symptoms to guide us to the remedy choice. That remedy works with your body to clear away symptoms and issues. We're not suppressing them or pushing them away or back under the surface. Homeopathy has been around since the 1800s. The creator of homeopathy, Samuel Samuel Hahnemann, was looking for something that was gentle, long-lasting, and curative, as opposed to how mainstream medicine was practicing at that time, and some would argue still is. (laughs) It is based on the law of similars, so substances that cause symptoms in a healthy person can heal those same symptoms in a sick person, so like cures like. An example of this is coffee acruda, which is made from coffee. As we know, coffee in most people consumed too late or in too large of quantities can bring on insomnia and hyperactivity of the mind. The homeopathic remedy coffee, coffea, can be taken by someone experiencing insomnia with hyperactivity of the mind, not necessarily because they drank too much caffeine, but for any reason. 
So they take the remedy, coffea, when they're experiencing those symptoms, and then those symptoms go away. Homeopathic medicines are referred to as remedies, not to be confused with the general term of home remedies. Remember, we're, we're our own system here, most often made from a plant, mineral, or animal source. So how are homeopathic remedies made, you might wonder. The source material or the substance from nature, for example, the actual plant, becomes a remedy through a very specific process called potentization, which involves repeated dilution or watering down and succussion, hitting or shaking against a hard surface. This maintains or increases the healing power of a substance, but negates the chance of side effects. The higher the dilution, along with the succussion, the higher the remedy. The number after the remedy, sorry, the number after the remedy name is the potency and ends in a C, which sometimes is followed by H or K, X or M. Usually a following question is how do I know which potency to take and how often? So typical potencies for at-home use are 30C or 200C. Either are good. I often recommend starting with 30, but in some instances, 200 is a better fit. An example of using 200 instead of 30 would be for labor and birth. It requires a huge amount of energy and emotion, so it matches better to the 200 potency. If there is a specific protocol though, telling you to use a certain potency and how often to take it, then do that. We are basing our decision of how often to take a remedy off of the specific problem and the intensity. So the more intense the, inspir the experience of a problem, this determines how often you will redose a remedy. For example, you wake up with a minor annoying headache that's a bit bothersome, but not getting in the way of your day. You might take the chosen remedy three or four times over the course of that day, or maybe just once or twice until it's gone. But let's say another day, you wake up with a fast onset migraine that drives you to remain in bed. Well, you might initially take your remedy every five to 15 minutes until the pain and the other symptoms begin to improve. And you can lay off to an hour, then every two hours, et cetera, until it's gone or you forget or whatever. And the question you've all been waiting for, is homeopathy safe for blank, for this person, this type of person? And the answer is that homeopathy is so safe. It's safe from the first breath of life until your last. That means that the newest of babes to the fragile last days of life and everything in between, homeopathy is so gentle and non-toxic that it can be used by everyone. So how is it so safe? You might ask, I read online or was told by my doctor that belladonna is toxic and can kill my child, for example. So remember the topic of potentization that I just talked about. That's what makes it so safe. Above a 12C remedy, 12C potency, there are no trace amounts of the original substance. Some remedies can be taken safely lower than that number. Many can be. But if you are concerned, stick to numbers that are higher than 12C. So as I mentioned, I usually recommend 30 or 200 for at-home use. Even though this is thought to be stronger, the remedy is actually so much more dilute and absolutely safe. The three remedies I'll do a quick overview of today are aconite or aconitum nepellis, arnica montana, and belladonna. I've chosen these three as they're a super great place for people, especially as moms, to start as they help so many problems that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. Please remember that I'm giving you a super quick overview. These remedies cover so much more than what I'm just breezing through today. So the first remedy, aconite, is made from the plant monkshood. With aconite, there is a suddenness to the symptoms. They are intense. There are often big fears and thoughts of dying. It is great for the initial stages of sickness and infections. If something comes on and you're not sure what to take, aconite is often a good place to begin. So it's good for the initial stages of croup, of colds, of flus, of ear infections, throat infections, 
any sickness, often you're starting with aconite. It's great for panic and anxiety, including any panic and anxiety about birth or that might come on suddenly in birth. It's great for shock. It's good to consider for eye injuries. And it's the top, uh, one of the top remedies for urine retention in postpartum moms and new babies. The next remedy is Arnica Montana, which is made from the plant leopard's bane. It's used for conditions that are, result, are the result of an injury or feel like you've been injured. For all trauma and bruising, or if you feel like you've been beaten or run over by a truck, even if you haven't. Arnica affects the venous system, so it helps the body to reabsorb blood. It's used for head injuries, concussions. It's used for pre and post surgery, helps with healing, for bleeding. It's recommended to take Arnica once at the beginning of labor to help prevent hemorrhage and to get a start on pain. And Arnica is also recommended afterwards, at least three times per day for three days postpartum to help with healing tissues, it slows bleeding and helps after pains. And it's just great for, the, for pain in the body in general. And the last remedy for today is belladonna, which is made from the deadly nightshade. Symptoms also usually come on suddenly as they do with aconite. There's often redness, heat, throbbing, and an, an intensity when it's needed. It's commonly known by moms for kids' fevers, which are high and sudden onset, but it's actually my favorite remedy for pain, headaches, migraines, teeth, ears. I could go on for a long time. <laughs> it's great for intense pains of labor and sometimes for labors that are slowly progressing. It's used for infections of the eyes, ears, throat. It's used postpartum for infection, for example, of a C-section wound. And it's amazing for engorgement, postpartum, and for mastitis. So that's actually all the time that we have for today. I really hope you enjoyed this little peek into the wonderful world of homeopathy. You can find me on Instagram at herhomeopathy or at herhomeopathy.ca to keep learning. Or if you need homeopathic support and would like to work with me, you can find those details over there too. Thanks for listening. Bye. What an amazing episode. I am so thankful to all of the moms that have contributed to our special series for Mother's Day, and I hope that you are enjoying it too. Do me a favor, and if you enjoyed this episode, please share it out and tag me, tag the guest, so that more moms can join in on these wonderful episodes. Don't forget to check out the show notes for more and to connect with today's guests and grab any downloadable freebies. It's linked in the description or you can go to fiercelizzy.com slash podcast slash mom to mom. And that's the number two mom to mom. And as always stay fierce mama.